Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Keisha Knight. I'm the director of IDA Funds. Um, I am a slender woman with brown skin sitting in front of a blurred white background. I have very short black hair and I'm wearing a denim button up dress. I'm coming to you today from the ancestral and present day land of the Tongva people, also known as Los Angeles, where I might add, we are continuing to experience extreme drought. So I wanted to thank you for joining us today for this exciting and hopefully useful panel. And we want you to leave this panel feeling empowered to use the tools that our speakers are gonna lay out. Um, these tools that we hope will help make your filmmaking practice more sustainable. And I also want to encourage you to check in with us at any time to let us know what types of teach outs or other programming might be useful to you. Um, you can always email us at grants at documentary.org um, with any questions, comments. Um, we'll get back in touch with you briefly and um, take, we won't take too much time, promise. Um, so I wanted to let you know also, we'll be streaming this live today on YouTube, but that doesn't mean that you can't ask questions. Our team is monitoring the chat and we'll be passing your questions along to the moderator. So please feel free to put your comments or questions in the chat and we'll make sure our moderator Betsy Steinberg gets them. And before I introduce our moderator today and our panelists, um, I just want to thank the IDA team that made this our first teach out in a long time possible. So we have our Director of Marketing and Communications, Zafrahan Yumru, our Senior Manager of Public Programs, Camelia Shafani. And I'd also like to thank Sergio Andres Lobo Navia, who is the technical producer for Getting Real. And they all helped us bring this together and are with us today in this virtual space. Also a huge thanks to Rhonda Lear, our cart captioner today, and our ASL interpreter, interpreters, Sarika Mehta and Selena Flowers. So I just wanna thank you all for being steadfast and for making this possible. Now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our panelists and our moderator today. I'll start with our panelists and, um, and then I'll leave our, with our moderator and hand it over to our moderator, Betsy Steinberg. So our two panelists come today from two different states that are both in the same time zone, uh, Louisiana and Illinois. So we have Chris Stelly and Chris is a native Louisianan and Chris joined Louisiana's Economic Development Entertainment Office in 2004. His official title is Executive Group Director, Louisiana Entertainment and Digital Media. And under Stelly's tenure and direction, Louisiana quickly became one of the top film production destinations. And due to the trailblazing incentive program, Louisiana experienced exponential growth and the state became a powerhouse in the film industry. So Chris is gonna join us um, and give us a little bit of history to all of this. And hopefully you have some questions for him as well. So thank you so much, Chris, for being with us today. And our second panelist from Illinois is Cesar Lopez. And just to let you know a little bit about Cesar, Cesar Lopez is the tax credit manager and diversity, off, and diversity office of the Illinois Film Production Services Tax Credit Program at the Illinois Film Office. The film office is a branch of the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, whose mission is to promote the Illinois film industry in order to foster growth and job opportunities. The film office offers assistance with locations, housing, casting, and crew and tax incentives. And Caesar is gonna be talking a lot about um, the changes in the Illinois tax incentive programs and how those are beneficial to um, independent documentary filmmakers. And finally, last but not least, our illustrious moderator, Betsy Steinberg. And so moderating today is Betsy Steinberg, a documentary film producer and media consultant with expertise in production, creative development, and project management. She's also the director of strategic initiatives for the Independent Film Alliance in Chicago. So Betsy, I think I'll just, after that, all those words, I'll leave it over to you to kind of get this conversation started and just reminding the audience that we'll be coming back together at the end for, um, 
a Q&A. So please drop your questions in the chat. We'll be picking them up from YouTube Live and putting them over to Betsy throughout. All right, thank you all so much for being here. Hi, everybody. It's such an honor to be here. And I wanna thank Keisha and the rest of the team at IDA for inviting me to talk about something that is very important and very close to my heart, which is film tax incentives. Um, and um, one of the things that um, uh, uh, Keisha didn't mention is I, I used to run the film commission in the state of Illinois. So I used to have the daily pleasure of working with our panelist, Cesar Lopez. And um, while I was at the film commission, I had the not quite as frequent, but equal pleasure of working with Chris Stelly at all of our film commissioner events. So I'm so happy to be here and I'm so happy to be with these two distinguished gentlemen to talk about the subject. Um, one of the things I thought we could start with was to demystify what some of these terms mean before we even got into the, the specific areas of film tax credits that might, or film tax incentives that might interest documentary filmmakers, I wanted to first just start with uh, some basic terms. And um, a film tax incentive is exactly what it sounds like. It is a tax incentive, i.e. an economic incentive for a filmmaker to choose a particular location to produce their project. And the reason these incentives exist is because the film industry is a great economic engine. And there are many states and municipalities who are really interested in having your film business in their state to create jobs, to um, promote the visuals that happen in films that, that make our, our individual states tourist destinations or increase interest in the areas. And so all these different state legislatures really want your business. So in order to attract the business, many states have instituted these tax incentives, which are basically you come to our state or our city and because we're so happy to have your business, we will somehow figure out a way to give you a financial incentive for being here. And the easiest way they have to do that is with tax breaks. So that's sort of the whole reason behind tax incentives, film tax incentives. I'm gonna turn it over to Chris um, who uh, can tell everybody the difference between a tax credit and a tax rebate. Take it away, my friend, Chris. All right, thank you, Betsy. Um, again, thank you, Keisha, for having me. Great opportunity for, uh, for me to be in front of you guys today. Um, I'm talking to you from downtown Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where it is hot, sunny, and quite humid outside. <laughs> Typical Louisiana summer. It's been wet for the past three or four weeks, so we're not in drought status. But at the same time, um, we continue to, uh, to, to love the weather down here and come inside any chance that we get. Um, yeah, uh, so, so the difference between a tax credit or tax rebate, refund, and the terminology of it all. What Louisiana offers is a tax credit, meaning that it is an instrument to offset income taxes, specifically here in Louisiana. However, while you can also offset any income tax liability that the state of Louisiana charges, the production company, which typically doesn't have Louisiana income tax liability, can opt to transfer it back to the state and we will issue you a check for 90 cents uh, of the face value meaning you get 90 cents back for every dollar you transfer to our state. There's a 2% transfer fee, which that means you net 88%. You have a million dollars in Louisiana tax credits. That's an $880,000 check that the state will cut you um, after going through the entire process. 
There's also other ways that some states provide uh, monetary benefits besides tax credits. So, so there's the pure tax credit, like I said, where you can use it to offset any income taxes that you may have in a certain jurisdiction, or it's a rebatable tax credit, meaning that if you um, tra transfer it to the state and will give you a rebate, it can be a dollar for dollar, it can be a percentage of the actual value of, of the instrument or different things like that. Or you can get a refund, meaning you file your taxes. If, you're, if your tax is zero, you'll get a refund of overage. So there's different ways that states um, utilize these instruments to, like Betsy said, attract the film industry here. Our goal in Louisiana has always been to simplify the process so that you, as the filmmaker, as the producer, as the investor in these projects, uh, take the shortest route towards monetize monetization of the actual instrument. So our program has gone from a pure tax credit to where it is today, which is a sort of a hybrid, but it's still issued as a tax credit. I'm sorry, Betsy, you're on mute. I recently saw a very funny New Yorker cartoon about someone just in this situation saying, after two years, I still can't figure out my mute and unmute, unmute button. <laughs> so sorry about that. <laughs> um, thanks, Chris, that was, that was super helpful. Um, Caesar, I'm wondering if you could talk in a little bit more detail about what it means to transfer a tax credit and why having a transferable tax credit is um, a helpful tool for filmmakers. Um, sure. Uh, so uh, in Illinois, um, we offer a transferable tax credit. So uh, what that means, and then like Chris and, and, and Betsy uh, conveyed, uh, it is one of the forms of incentives uh, that, are, that are offered by uh, various states and jurisdictions. So uh, once a recipient or, or a production receives the tax credit, um, it can be utilized, uh, for example, in Illinois, which offers a transferable tax credit, it can be utilized to offset the, the uh, production's Illinois income tax liability. If that production or applicant does not have an uh, Illinois income tax liability, it can be transferred. So as opposed to Louisiana who purchases the, the credits, the state itself purchases the credits, Illinois offers transferability, which means you can, you as the production can transfer it uh, to another taxpayer, effectively selling it. Um, and so in Illinois, there's a pretty robust secondary market for the transferring of tra tax credits. So, uh, you know, in that uh, example, let's say it's a $100,000 tax credit. Um, and, and on our website, we have a list of uh, buyers and brokers that have offered their services or willingness to purchase uh, incentives, uh, film tax credit incentives. So, you know, uh, productions are welcome to reach out, find the, you know, the best deal that they can get. Uh, once they have that lined up, and it's usually before we issue the incentive, uh, the tax credit certificate, they have the buyer lined up. So uh, it can happen almost, uh, I've seen it happen on the same day where we issue the tax credit certificate um, and they have their buyer lined up either through a broker or through an immediate uh, uh, transferee, which could be you know, uh, an investor um, uh, that might have a liability in Illinois, uh, a, a purchaser of the, of the tax credit, uh, Oftentimes it's large entities, large corporations that are uh, in Illinois that have uh, a large liability in the state. Uh, either way, once that uh, transfer is affected, uh, it, it is, it's effectively cash in hand. Um, so on that $100,000 uh, tax credit, um, the, the, the production will likely offer a, a small discount uh, on the transfer of that. Uh, but that's something that's negotiated between, you know, the buyer and the seller. Um, but anecdotally, it's about you're, you're looking to get about 93 to 98 cents on the dollar um, on that transaction. 
So pretty close to the tax credit amount. And so then what that allows a production to do is either use it for finishing funds sometimes or to use it to pay back investors or, you know, to fund their, uh, their, uh, their next project. So uh, it, it's, a, it's a very useful tool in, in financing uh, films and documentaries and, and commercials for that matter. Great, thank you, Caesar. Sure. Um, so I wanna take a couple things that Caesar and Chris have just explained and I wanna sort of restate things a little bit. I don't wanna to be too fundamental for everybody, but I just, there are two different ways that tax credits work in these two different ways that Caesar and Chris have laid out. And because I'm not good at math, I'm using simple numbers. If I spent $100 in the state of Louisiana and I, and I was approved for their film tax credit program, the state of Louisiana would basically buy, oh, I'm sorry, if I spent $100 and I got $30 back from the state of Louisiana, they would then buy that from me and hand me over $27. And then I've got that extra cash. In Illinois, if I spent the same amount of money, if I happened to be an Illinois domiciled company, I could just 100% put that towards my Illinois income taxes. If I am not an Illinois company or I don't have a tax liability, I can sell that to someone in the state who does. For instance, the XYZ um, hardware company. And I would negotiate with them on how much they would buy it for. So it could be they'd buy it for 95 cents on the dollar and I'd walk away with more like 28.50 um, from that original $30 credit I got. I hope this is making some sense. Um, Chris, can you tell everybody just so they know what a tax rebate is? There are a few states that offer tax rebates. Yeah, um, it's in, in the most simplest terms, a tax rebate is just direct cash, right? You, 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 you go through whatever process may be in place, you earn the credit, you go through the the process of, uh, of um, scrutinization of your budget, what you actually spent, whether it's an audit required by the state like Louisiana or other methodologies that different states have, and they will essentially look at your paperwork, review whatever you submitted and offer you a rebate. If it's a 25% rebate, then if you spend $100, you'll get $25 back, quite simple. Great, thank you. So, like all good things, there are rules and regulations. And I wonder if Caesar, you could touch on the sort of headlines of the rules and regulations in order to qualify for an Illinois film tax credit. Um, sure, absolutely. Um, I actually have uh, a few slides. That, that I think would be helpful in just, uh, you know, conveying the information. Uh, it's, it's a lot of information, but um, uh, I think like Louisiana, Illinois is one of the more simpler uh, programs to navigate and understand and, and take from start to finish. Um, and, and of course, you know, I, I'm, I'm here promoting Illinois, but <laughs> um, at Louisiana isn't bad either. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, turn on the uh, share my screen here. I have uh, a few slides that uh, I'd like to share with you to, to sort of iterate what uh, what we do here in Illinois. And uh, hopefully you can see that. So what I'm showing is a is just sort of a the uh, I don't even know an intro slide a splash screen Illinois Film Office tax credit information. Uh, but moving on to the second slide, which uh, has 
sort of general information on the Illinois tax incentive. And just to back up a little bit, um, I know we mentioned that are, there are a number of states and jurisdictions that offer a wide variety of incentives. Um, I think at this point, and it ebbs and, ebbs and flows, uh, I wanna say there are about 39 right now. I could be mistaken, it changes almost daily. Uh, sometimes there are downtrends, uptrends. It's been up to, you know, 40 something down to, you know, low 30s. And it just depends on very sort of, uh, you know, political climates and, and you know, budgetary situations within, within each state. Um, and so, you know, there are a number of resources out there that are uh, available uh, to uh, filmmakers, documentary, documentary filmmakers. Obviously, we're here to talk about Illinois and Louisiana, but there are others. Um, Obviously, we're, we'd say that uh, Louisiana and Illinois are the best uh, in terms of what we offer, but uh, we'll leave that up to you to decide. Um, uh, certainly, you know, there are others that offer, you know, uh, uh, different types of incentives, different rates. Um, and again, just a quick search, you'll find a, a wide variety of uh, resources out there that can help you navigate through, uh, through the in, uh, incentive uh, lay of the land, so to speak. But uh, just on to Illinois. Um, so uh, again, as we said, it's a 30% tax credit. Um, and what that covers is uh, one, uh, goods and services purchased from Illinois vendors. So, you know, everything from, you know, lunch, coffee to camera rentals, you know, truck rentals, catering, so on and so forth. Anything that's uh, uh, directly related to the production um, and obviously reasonable under the circumstances would qualify. Um, some new developments uh, that just took place, uh, that, that just came into effect July 1st uh, of this year, uh, the, the limit uh, for qualifying wages, Illinois resident wages is up to $500,000 now, uh, up from $100,000 uh, prior to July 1st. So that means a production can can pay an individual, uh, you know, up to five hundred thousand, and and would qualify uh, those wages. Um, also, uh, there's an additional fifteen percent uh, credit on that. So, for certain individuals, uh, production would would get forty five percent of what they pay a person um, if they uh, earn at least a thousand dollars and they live in areas of high unemployment. So, you know, we're we're trying to promote uh, hiring of uh, Illinois residents that, that live in, in areas of, of high unemployment that are in need of, of work. So if you hire for someone from there, now you're looking at 45 cents on the dollar back to what you pay uh, a person working on a production. Um, uh, something else that's new to, uh, uh, to Illinois in uh, just starting this July, we are now qualifying non-resident uh, wages and it's for a limited number of positions. Uh, namely uh, above the line individuals, but namely writer, director, DP, production designer, costume designer, production accountant, VFX supervisor, editor, composer. And then if your budget is less than 2 million, 20, 25 million, sorry, uh, two actors, over 25 million, four actors. So that's an expansion of the incentive uh, that we're hoping to, you know, attract more business, retain what we have, but also attract, uh, so hopefully sort of the, the middle ground productions, uh, the, the indie films and, and the, uh, the smaller productions that, that will make Illinois even more competitive. Um, in terms of, uh, what, what qualifies again, it's everything from pre-production. So once the final script is established, uh, to to the completion of post. So uh, and you know again, if it occurs in Illinois, it it will qualify. Um, so sort of a, a wide range of qualifying costs, uh, even as they relate to documentaries. Um, uh, there is uh, it, and, and this is where you know if you're looking uh, to locate your production, these are sort of the 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 uh, the, the fine print that you should be looking at. Um, because some states have a program cap, Illinois does not. Um, uh, so what that means is, uh, you know, Illinois is sort of open-ended. It's whatever the local market can, can bear. Some states have a, a cap of, you know, as small as 
you know, 25 million, 50 million, 100 million, 400 million. But, you know, you're talking about California and New York. And, you know, once they hit that cap, you're either in a queue for for an extended period um, or you have to wait or your project isn't funded and then you're on some sort of waiting list. So that complicates the program uh, significantly. And it also protracts the uh, the processing period in terms of start to finish uh, from when you receive that incentive. So again, I, I welcome everybody to shop around, but that's something that yeah, I would recommend everybody to look at is, is uh, if they have a cap, uh, reach out to, to that state or, or uh, locality and ask where they are in terms of their cap. Um, one thing that I believe uh, has made uh, the Illinois Film Incentive uh, successful and uh, has given us some longevity in the program is that um, uh, it's uh, some years back, it was renewed uh, for a 10 year period and uh, th that continues. So uh, our program is up for renewal in 2027. So which means that uh, again, because uh, sort of incentives come and go, that gives assurances, somewhat assurances uh, to, to producers that, you know, if they decide to, to uh, locate their, their production in Illinois, that the incentive will be intact at least throughout the production period. So for Illinois, we don't have to worry about, uh, you know, going to the legislature for renewal until 2027. And then finally that, you know, the, the, the credit is transferable and we talked about what that means. Uh, but the bottom line there is uh, at the end of, the, of that process, at the end of the day, it's cash in hand, um, you know, to, to pay investors, so on and so forth. Um, so just moving on to uh, uh, to the next slide, and and what you'll find is that you know these some of these um, are are germane to Illinois, but not every other state. Um, specifically, uh, you know, feature films. You know, you'll find that uh, that many states qualify those pilots, TV pilots, and TV series. Um, uh, those qualify, including streaming. Documentaries, Illinois qualifies documentaries. Not every state does. So, um, you know, again, do your homework. Um, but Illinois is, uh, in terms of uh, qualified productions, documentaries do qualify. And then, you know, there's a list of, you know, others, uh, non-scripted television, animated content, uh, obviously streaming uh, qualifies, and then commercial ads um, uh, also qualify. And I think that, you know, uh, again, one selling point for, New, uh, not New York, for Illinois is that uh, we have a very low uh, uh, threshold of uh, entry. Um, so the minimum qualifying spend for a production less than 30 minutes is $50,000. Uh, uh, 30 minutes or more, it's 100,000 qualifying Illinois spend. So, you know, again, we're welcoming those smaller productions. Um, we don't have a, a, a um, an application fee, um, and and again, we don't have a cap on our on our incentives. So, uh, in terms of you know timing for your production, uh, neither of those should be a factor if you're considering Illinois. So again, so just in a again, there's there's a pages and pages of rules. Um, and uh, you know every every incentive that you're going to encounter is is you know they're established by usually by legislation and then there's a whole set of rules that accompany accompany them because of course we're government and we like <laughs> we like uh, rules and, and procedures. But uh, again, you know we're fiduciaries of the state. We're responsible to the taxpayers of Illinois, and and that's the bottom line that you know we're trying to be uh, run a responsible program that's that's accountable to the taxpayers of our respective states. Uh, but in Illinois, um, uh, like like Chris, I think we we've been we've looked to simplify the process as much as we can, uh, and I, I feel that we have accomplished that. Um, so uh, for Illinois, the the credit is a sort of a two step process. So the first step is to to apply for the incentive, and um, and that's it's it's pretty simple. So on the website on our website at film.illinois.gov, I've got a six page application. It's you know large print, a lot of space, um, so don't let that scare you. Uh, there, really, what we're looking to do is uh, pre-qualify the production based on the sort of the minimum eligibility criteria. So think about it like a kind of like a mortgage pre-qualification. 
you know, uh, you know, we're looking to see that the production uh, will meet the minimum criteria and will be eligible for the, the film tax credit. Um, we require uh, the application be submitted at least five business days prior to shooting in Illinois uh, for film and television and then for uh, commercials 24 hours. So uh, again, you, you've got uh, plenty of time to, to submit that in there uh, to us. Uh, but what's key here is uh, upon approval, so it takes about 30 to 60 days for us to process the application. It goes through our legal office and the Department of Commerce and so on. But the end result of that, and uh, uh, I think uh, productions find this helpful, uh, is uh, what we call an accredited production certificate. So again, it's that sort of pre mortgage pre-approval form. So then you can take and, you know, shop for your home. But in this case, um, maybe shop for investors or secure funds that, you know, you say Illinois has said that, you know, our production will qualify and we will uh, qualify for this incentive is, and it, you know, if this criteria is maintained. So I think that's a really helpful tool or instrument in, in using, uh, using that to, to uh, you know, gain investors or uh, sort of get the go ahead for, for producing uh, your, your film or documentary. Um, and then, uh, you know, once, once uh, you know, you start production, you, you uh, hire, film, spend, pay, maybe not all in that same order, but once, once you've uh, completed your production in Illinois, and again, this can go through the completion of uh, post-production here, um, and you're ready to claim uh, the incentive, um, that goes through... Uh, uh, what we call it, uh, it's an audit. Well, it's not, I'm a CPA, so it's not really an audit, but we'll just say, call it an audit. Um, but of many, uh, like Chris, you know, uh, Louisiana and other states, you know, they, they're they requiring an independent CPA uh, to verify that the costs incurred, you know, are eligible for the Illinois incentive. So um, from, from that point, uh, the, it comes to us and, um, we review the, we audit the audit essentially. Um, and uh, so in about 90 days, we uh, issue the tax credit certificate. So at that point, um, as I mentioned previously, you may have already had your buyer lined up, shopped it around, uh, gone through one of the brokers on the site, they shop it around for you. And as soon as you receive that, you're ready to transfer it. So uh, from the time, uh, we receive your claim from the CPA to the time that the credit is issued or the time that you have cash in hand is a little over 90 days, roughly. Uh, you know, it could be more or less depending on how many we have in the queue. And so, but it could be as little as 90 days. So again, we, we really look to, uh, to st streamline our process uh, and um, uh, reduce the wait times as, as much as possible. Um, and again, we talked about, uh, you know, so what do you do once you have that, that uh, uh, tax credit certificate? The, the, the vast majority of um, uh, productions that receive an incentive in Illinois, um, they transfer them out uh, because like Chris said, many don't have a tax liability in Illinois. Um, so what that entails is uh, it's a form that I have on the website. So you just identify your, your, your purchaser um, and then you can split it up to 10 different ways. So if you have a hundred thousand dollar tax credit certificate, you could split it, you know, 10,000 each person, a thousand, split it however many ways you want. Um, and then unused credits can be carried forward for five years. Um, and this, the, the transfer can be done uh, within one year of issues. So again, uh, it's, I know it's a lot of information to, to, di to digest. I have uh, you know, FAQs, the rules, if you wanna read all that, rules and regulations on our website. And then of course, I'll, I'll share my, my contact information here. Feel free to reach out to me directly. And uh, you know, we can talk about how um, you know, it's, uh, uh, it might be um, something that, that's, uh, that's for you or for your, uh, for your documentary. A uh, couple of things I, I want to point out um, that, that weren't uh, specifically identified in any of the slides is that um, in Illinois, we require uh, at least one day of filming 
Um, uh, so, uh, so for documentaries, you know, it, it, that can, that can mean a lot of things, but, you know, there should be some filming in Illinois. Um, and then the, the, the qualifying costs are that their costs are, uh, essentially cash outlay. So in-kind services, uh, would not qualify. It would have to be recorded as an expense, a cash outlay, uh, on behalf of the production. Um, so hopefully, you know, uh, you know, some of this information is useful to you. Um, and at a minimum, uh, you know, we've created sort of a, uh, uh, awareness that uh, tax credit incentives, uh, film incentives exist. Um, they've been around for a while now. I know Louisiana was a very early adopter. Illinois wasn't too far behind. And uh, they sort of, uh, uh, they, they're a big uh, uh, deciding factor on where productions uh, 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 occur nowadays. Um, and uh, just rest assured that uh, the studios and networks, Netflix, all of them, they have armies of people that that uh, know about incentives oftentimes more than than I do. They know more my uh, program uh, better than I do sometimes. So, um, you know, if you don't have that, you have us. Uh, sort of the next best thing is the, the people that are actually doing the work. So, you know, again, feel free to reach out to me uh, and or Chris. I, I'm offering your services too, Chris. Um, uh, you know, on any questions that you would have on our specific programs. Thank you, Caesar. That was just so comprehensive. Thank you so much. Um, I thought of a few things I wanted to dig in on, on your presentation, but before you, I do that, I wanted to ask Chris, if you would like to talk more about Louisiana's um, program specifically. Well, absolutely. Got to share, share with everyone what Louisiana is doing. And, uh, and thank you, Caesar, uh, for, for the shout outs. I think, you know, between Illinois and Louisiana, you have two of the top performing incentive states in the industry right now. Um, when productions are considering where to go, I think our states both come up in multiple conversations. Um, and it's always re refreshing to see how common the programs are. are there, there's some basic um, tenets that all of these programs have, or at least should have, in my opinion, in that the more you spend locally in whatever jurisdiction you're pursuing the credits, the bigger the benefit will be. So you come to Louisiana, we want you to spend all your money in Louisiana. We want you to hire as many Louisiana residents. Um, we have a base rate of 25%. If you um, use Louisiana resident labor, you get an additional 15% on that, uh, that particular labor cost. If you shoot outside of the greater New Orleans metro statistical area, we'll bump it up 5% on your base. So your base becomes 30%. If you shoot uh, a production or if you film a production that's based on a screenplay created by a Louisiana resident, documentaries included, we not only give you an additional 10% on your base where your base goes from 25 to 35%, but you get uh, a lower threshold of spending of 50,000. So your minimum, your minimum spend threshold on productions based on a Louisiana screenplay is 50,000. Um, traditionally and typically our, our minimum spend is 300,000, um, and that's anywhere in the state. Um, so you can, however you piece together the different, the different parts of our incentive, you can max out at up to 40%. Roughly put, if, if you spend a million in Louisiana, we can give you no, no more than $400,000 back. Um, in addition to that, we do have some limitations. So the, the most you can pay one person, resident or non-resident, and get credits is $3 million. So that, that covers all of your, your resident and non-resident talent. Your resident talent will, you know, again, be potentially eligible for that additional 15%. Your non-resident talent just gets the base rate of 25%. Um, Anybody working in Louisiana on a production that you pay a wage to, uh, there is a forced withholding. You have to remit taxes uh, in accordance with the individual's withholding certificate 
or if they are a loan out or don't file a withholding certificate, uh, the maximum tax rate, which I believe is like 4.3, 4.4%, it just went down. Um, we have a per project cap of $20 million. If it's a traditional feature documentary or, or non-scripted uh, series, if it's a scripted episodic, we go up to 25 million per season. Louisiana has, um, in 2017, we decided to kind of focus on one aspect of the industry and that's scripted episodics, whether it's done by a, a streamer or a more traditional network. Um, we've decided and as a policy choice to focus on those types of productions a little bit more heavy than a traditional feature film or anything like that, simply because um, they offer longer term employment opportunities for our crew and they tend to be uh, spend more money in the local area as the production becomes more and more mature. Um, again, we, we do have a three-step process as opposed to uh, what Illinois has is a, a dual-step process. You come in, you file your initial paperwork through, through our website. We have a fully integrated online application system. Um, we do charge an application fee, which is a percentage of what your estimated benefit would be. The minimum is $250 and the maximum, I believe, is $25,000, but, uh, but that's for really, really large productions. We also have an audit process. Um, that you must pay an initial deposit before you get any paperwork from our office. So in order to complete the, pro the, 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 the process on the front end, there are two fees that we do collect. Um, and so those fees can range from 7,500 to 15,000 to 5,000 for some smaller projects to, you know, 5,250 would be the minimum that a documentary, a uh, 50,000 document. $50,000 documentary would be required to, to submit beforehand. We will go in and assign you a CPA on the front end so that you can work with them um, um, in order to uh, help maximize that benefit on the back end and more importantly to help, uh, to help productions organize their paperwork. Once you completed your spending in Louisiana, like Illinois, we do require our cameras to roll so you must do some production in Louisiana unless you're a post-production only. We do allow post-production only, which is really beneficial to, to documentaries in my opinion, because most of the work on a documentary is done in post. And so as you're looking at other areas of the world to, to film or where, wherever your subject matter may be, keep Louisiana in mind when you're deciding where to do your post work. Um, once you spend all your money, get your audit in, we'll issue you the credit. And at that point in time, you can turn it back over to our Department of Revenue again for the uh, for the it's a train. It's considered a transfer back to the state. Um, but we'll issue you a check for 90 percent of the face value of the credits or you can claim it on um, any Louisiana personal or corporate income tax liability you may have. Um, other things that we offer to help that benefit you is what's called an irrevocable designee. So if you have an individual or a financier or a banking institution that wants to lend against the, the proposed tax credit return, return, again, getting that initial certification letter in Louisiana or that pre-certification letter helps you obtain uh, some sort of financing we will take it a step further and issue the credits to the individual or entity that provided the financing. Um, that way that individual, that entity can either use it to offset income taxes dollar for dollar, or they can transfer it back to the state. You have a one year time frame to transfer the credit back to the state, but you can use the credits for five years into the future if you decide to offset any Louisiana income tax liability. So there's a lot of similarities between the two programs. Um, we, are, uh, we are on the cusp within the next two weeks of launching a new website, which is part of the reason why I don't have collateral prepared or any slides. I'm, I'm working to rebrand and to, to re, uh, revitalize our website. The link to that is louisianaentertainment.gov. My contact information and my team's contact information is there on that site. And that site has 
any and all as much information as you could possibly hope, want, or need. And I'm always here to help out as well. So that's a bird's eye view of what Louisiana offers. Hi, thank you, Chris. That was amazing. So um, I have a I have a question, which is maybe you could each talk about the fact that um, so much of what you're talking about sounds like it applies to feature films, um, the spending levels and such. And documentaries generally work with a much smaller crew and a much um, smaller budget. And I was wondering, Caesar, if you could start and talk about how documentaries in a really practical sense have worked in Illinois. You know, knowing that they're probably an under a million dollar um, process, maybe maybe around a million, but so oftentimes right. under. Yeah, so, um, so uh, again, Illinois has a very low uh, threshold for qualifying. Uh, which is a uh, minimum of $100,000 qualifying Illinois spent. Um, so for a documentary under a million dollars, you know, that, uh, that, that would likely, you know, uh, bring them in that qualifying range. Uh, so although it's not specific uh, to documentaries, documentaries are um, uh, qualifying productions, as I noted in the uh, in the presentation, and we have uh, incentivized a number of documentaries, um, as you know. Uh, so uh, it's it's definitely a useful tool for uh, for the documentary filmmaker, um, and uh, of course the the cost sort of the cost patterns are going to be a little different, but uh, nonetheless, I think. There's a real benefit for for documentaries, uh, especially especially in Illinois, with that low uh, uh, threshold of entry. Thank you, Chris. Do you have any specifics about documentaries and um, anything that applies to those that maybe is different from higher budgeted feature films? Oh yeah, ab absolutely. Um, you know, again, if you're anywhere between 300,000 and a million, the program that we have in Louisiana is certainly open for documentaries. We allow them and they are eligible by law. Um, it, it, it just depends on that spin threshold, right? I mean, I'm often telling uh, young filmmakers, whether it's documentaries or narratives, at $50,000, you have to do the math because there are upfront costs and you have to make that determination um, on whether or not our program is beneficial to you. Now, there are ways to maximize it and I would hate for any production to leave quote unquote money on the table, so to speak, um, because you know there are ways that you can maximize that benefit even at 50,000 if you're you know if you are able to shoot all your footage in Louisiana and shoot it in an area outside of New Orleans and you can create a screenplay uh, and you know or you can use a Louisiana screenwriter and base your production off of that screenplay if a screenplay will exist for your particular uh, documentary, there are ways to do it here. It's not something we we have a, uh, do a lot of. It's just a lot of it in our experience has been more subject matter driven. We've done very high end documentaries that have had hefty budgets. Um, the one that comes to mind is the Spike Lee documentary when he came in and did uh, the post Katrina. I think it was called uh, When the Levees Rise or as the levees rise. Um, but we do have these conversations all the time and we're, we're advising. We try to get documentaries uh, to, to utilize our program. We try to get them to come down and, and do their post work. Like I said earlier, post only work will do, again, if you meet the mental spin thresholds. Um, but again, we, 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 we really are, uh, our program is geared towards any and all types of production. There are very few things that we don't allow. There's, in fact, just three things that we don't allow to qualify. That is uh, televised news, sporting events, and music festivals. So 
webisodes. We've seen, you know, we've seen um, industrial videos, how-to training videos, again, all meeting the minimum spend threshold that was set by our legislature. That's great. Thank you so much. Um, there is a question in the Q&A that I think is a perfect time to ask because it is definitely um, an important part of the Illinois Film Tax Credit, I can tell you. And the question is, um, if a DOC project, it's for Illinois, has been 95% shot before applying for the credit, can it still qualify? Uh, I will answer for Illinois. Um, there are very few things that will disqualify a, a production in Illinois. Um, uh, there, there are a couple of things that that uh, that a production must meet in terms of uh, eligibility criteria, and one of the biggest is that you know we're talking about you know uh, uh, options, other state options, right? And uh, th that was the the sort of the impetus of creating the 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 incentive in, in Illinois is to uh, give uh, producers an option uh, to or make Illinois available as an option as an alternative to uh, filming it in California, New York, Louisiana. Um, <laughs> uh, but. As part of the application process, uh, and I didn't get too too deep into the the application process, uh, you know, uh, considering the, the time that we have. But one of the the big eligibility criteria is uh, what we call but for or competitive need, in that uh, an applicant uh, must demonstrate in the application document itself that uh, essentially that they have an out of state option, and that without the credit, the Illinois incentive they would shoot their documentary elsewhere. And that the incentive was the deciding factor in, um, in locating or shooting the production uh, in Illinois. Uh, now, if an applicant, and that's why, that's one of the reasons why we have um, uh, the, the timing requirements in terms of uh, submittal of the application. TV and film uh, at least five days before the start of filming in Illinois. Um, so if a, a production applies once they've already started shooting or they shot, you know, even 95%, that essentially negates that but for that competitive need because they've already started shooting without any prospect of the Illinois incentive. So that is one of the few disqualifying factors, at least for Illinois, that if um, they, they don't submit the application uh, within that required time period, uh, we will not accept that application and, and that will disqualify uh, a production from, uh, from any incentives. So um, if, you're really, if you're considering in Illinois, if you've already shot, then you know, unfortunately there's not much we can do there. Um, but if, if you are considering Illinois, like I said, there's no application fee. You can submit as, as early as you like uh, when you have that general information on your production, and I recommend you do. Uh, again, there's no fee, um, and uh, it, it, it would you know, eliminate any potential for you know, disqualifying uh, production if, if they shot uh, prior, to, uh, prior to applying. Thank you, Caesar. Chris, is there an issue in Louisiana if you start shooting or have shot a percentage of your film before you were to apply? No, short answer. Uh, Louisiana allows, we don't have a, a particular requirement to, to apply before production commences or, or any sort of set days. In fact, we allow a production to capture expenditures up to one year prior to the date of application and capture expenditures two years after the date of initial certification. Um, but I think it's important to note, um, and, and hopefully Caesar will agree, is that all states, as we're looking at these things, their incentives, there's a distinct difference between the definition of incentive and subsidy or grant. Um, these are not, the, 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 these states pass these programs 
in order to encourage this activity to happen in their jurisdictions. It's not found money. Um, oftentimes, if you do come to Louisiana and you apply after the fact, there, there, there are paperwork issues that may trip you up and cause us to say no. And we don't like to say no for any reason. We don't, you know, you may have missed a particular deadline or you may not have structured your company uh, properly, or you may not have uh, kept your books properly like our CPAs like. So always keep that in mind. One of the, the biggest things I tell small filmmakers and large filmmakers alike, uh, you got to keep really good records and know that if the incentive is important to your bottom line and important to your production, you have to consider it as such and give us, the administrators, the proper amount of time to evaluate and review. Because oftentimes, if you wait too late, you're going to get tripped up on something and it, it won't work for you. So you may get your hopes up for some, you know, 25 or 30 percent. And then Caesar or myself will have to tell you, you, you don't qualify for whatever reason. So we always encourage people to apply as soon as possible, um, well in advance of production commencing, so that we can engage and help you structure it properly and, and ultimately maximize that benefit. Yeah, thanks, Chris. I mean, there's nothing worse than a film office uh, person needing to tell somebody what they expected they were going to be getting isn't actually going to happen. That is a really, really unfortunate conversation. And I know from both of our offices that it doesn't happen very often because um, the individuals who work in both offices are really, really committed to information up front. And what I think I'm hearing from both of you is if I have a project and I'm thinking it might be a good fit for Illinois or Louisiana before I do anything, I should get in touch with the office and see if in fact it is a good fit. And Chris, do you guys have a, um, an application fee? I can't remember. We do. It's, it's like 0.5% of your anticipated benefit with a minimum of $250. Okay. Okay. So, so for a documentary person, depending on the project, that can be a significant cost, which would be well worth it if you were to go ahead and do it. But even more reason to call Chris's office and make sure that it's worth sending the application in. Um, and in the case of Illinois, it does not cost to apply. So you can't be hurt by applying. So if you have an idea that you think you're gonna be doing it, just get your applications in, get the information on the front end. I've had projects, um, one of the things I've done in the last year since um, leaving the Illinois Film Office is I have advised people on their film tax credit applications. And I always tell people, let's get it in in case you wanna take advantage of it. And if particulars change, at least in Illinois, you can change information that you won't be penalized. You'll still get the credit for having applied um, with enough, enough lead time. So um, that's great. Um, do either of you have anything about rules and regulations you want to add in before we open up for more questions? Uh, you know, I, I, anybody looking to shoot any type of project in any jurisdiction should certainly be aware of the law, be aware of the rules and regulations, be aware of the policies and procedures that are in place. Again, our, our goal, it, it, saying no by the time it's too late for a production is the most painful thing ever. And there's, th there are things that are, that are simply baked into our laws that just prevent us from administrators or prevent us from having any, any wiggle room. So, so we, we try to make sure that we have attestation statements, making sure that everyone is aware of the law, what the law says, um, what the policies and procedures are. Um, but another thing that we're conscious about is making sure that we don't change course midstream. If 
the legislation changes, for example, we will do everything within our power. And we've been quite successful at, at messaging this to our legislator that if you have an initial certification letter, we're not going to change the plan on you. We will not re re negatively retroactively impact the production that's in our system. And I'll go down, you know, that's that's one of my mantras is that making sure that we retain our credibility and, and assure you, the filmmaker, that if Louisiana says you're going to get something and you do every again, it's it's a it's a relationship. You've got to do what you need to do um, on your end. Um, then we're going to deliver no matter no matter what that plan is. Now, some of the things that we have done is if the law does change, we'll, we'll benefit productions going forward or productions that are currently in if the law allows us, but we will not negatively retroactively impact. So it's always important to keep up with those things as they, uh, they continue to change and will continue to change. Um, we, 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 our program has gone through, uh, through many, many different versions and have had tweaks here and there. And um, that's just the way all these things tend to operate. Sorry, everybody. I just got a whole bunch of uh, dogs barking in my house. Sorry about that. Um, I just like to quickly add to, to what Chris said. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, we're, it's, there. There's state programs, like I said, you know, we do have tons of rules and regulations because, you know, it, it is run by, by our res respective states. And I think at minimum, if you really are interested in, in either of our states or any other incentive, I said, I'd say at a minimum, look at the website. Uh, I, at least for Illinois, I've got some FAQs out there. I've got, uh, you know, description of programs. Of course, if you really want to do a deep dive, and, and I welcome you to uh, look at the rules, look at the statute. But at a minimum, to before we start the conversation, is is look at the website, look at the FAQs. So, uh, and then at that point, we can, you know, I, I gave out my information, and and uh, especially if you're new to the program, I, I welcome, you know, uh, a Zoom call, a meeting, whatever it is that we can do to to talk about uh, in, in further detail about the process and, and, and our, our respective programs. But uh, I think you do yourself a, a big uh, service if um, you, know, you at least have sort of the, the, the general uh, information so you can uh, you know, uh, gather your, your questions uh, and your thoughts um, uh, when, when we do uh, uh, you know, engage further uh, about the processes. Yeah, and I, we have, you know, downloaded a lot of information here, and it's, it, when you get all the information at once, it can seem a little bit overwhelming, um, and I want to encourage anybody who's on this um, um, Zoom to ask questions, and there is no such thing as a silly or stupid question. Um, Chris and Caesar and I, like, can all do this in our sleep, but that is after many years of working with it really closely. So I don't want anyone to feel as though they can't ask even a super basic question. That's what we are here for. And that's what um, we'd like to answer. And Betsy, I have a super basic question. Go for it. I have a few super basic questions, hopefully as we're, um, kind of waiting for uh, our audience to drop some questions in the YouTube live chat. Um, there are a few things. The first thing I just wanna verify um, with all of you is I'm a filmmaker. I I'm not a filmmaker, but say I, I were a filmmaker and um, I wanna learn more about this. I wanna figure out if Louisiana or um, Illinois or some other state is right for me and I'm getting overwhelmed with information. Should I just call you and you can talk me through it? Is that something um, that is that that you do with filmmakers? Like actually just like chat with them and figure out whether your incentives work or don't work? Oh, yeah. abs absolutely. Yeah, okay, so I just wanted to verify because oh, yeah. government, government, the idea of government yeah. can be intimidating, right? And yeah. the other question that's kind yeah. of related to that is the idea of government can also be um, slow, right? So I was actually wondering 
what different timelines for this process would be because most filmmakers are really operating with a, an urgency and so i'm just mm -hmm. wondering is this a kind of like figure out your production and we'll pay you back later or does it often come during the production i'm just kind of wondering what the timelines are and are we talking years months weeks yeah yeah um i think it's it's important to understand that that when we talk about certain terms this is considered soft money um and that means there's certain you you shouldn't really bank on it too too hard because it does come after a process caesar mentioned it earlier where there are responsibilities that we have fiduciary responsibilities that we have our you know we're also beholden to the taxpayers of the state of louisiana and one thing that we have to make sure is that any production that applies to our program is following the law is receiving a tax credit that's legitimately issued but our program is also based upon spending in the state so it the money from louisiana comes after now we try to we try to shrink that timeline and i i preach to my team and my philosophy is that we need to be as anti-bureaucratic as a bureaucratic agency can be in eliminating those things but a lot of it again is a relationship that there's a lot of responsibilities placed upon the filmmaker so our program and you have to apply by the 15th of each month if you get it in we'll evaluate turn over that initial certification if the project is eligible over the you know over the next 30 days so you should get it by the 15th if not before before the 15th of the following month you go out spend your money and here's where most of the time um, delay can and does occur in a lot of smaller productions that we see or independent productions we see. Once you get that that auditor engaged, um, then that can be anywhere from two to three months or longer, depending on how organized your records are and how quickly you answer questions. So keep that stuff in mind as you're spending money. Um, in Louisiana, for example, um, we don't allow in-kind services or in-kind contributions. So if if you're if you've been provided a, a classroom to shoot in and you don't actually spend money on rent, that's an ineligible expenditure. So it's about keeping good paperwork um, as you're going through the production. You turn in once we get the audit, depending on where certain things shake out, we can turn that around pretty quickly. Then you have another process. You have to either claim it on a tax return, which happens, you know, May 15th of every year for Louisiana residents, or you can get an extension. Um, you won't get, you know, that's how you capitalize on that benefit. But it can, depending on where you are in the queue at our Department of Revenue, it can take anywhere from 30 to 90 days to get the check back from the state. So a lot of these things aren't, aren't necessarily built on speed from a state perspective because we have to make sure that everything, all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and it's just not free money, so to speak. It can be very beneficial to you, but if you're not necessarily buttoned up for Louisiana, then it could cost some time. Yeah, Thanks, no, those Chris. are really good answers. Um, we have a couple more questions and I, I, I um, want to make sure we get everybody answered. Um, this is, I think Chris answered part of this already. Can you get, a t well, I think you both have in some way, but it's worth reiterating. Can you get a tax credit if you do post only in your state, Chris? Yes, if you meet the minimum spend thresholds. Great, Caesar. Illinois, no. Uh, there has to be at least one day of filming in Illinois. Um, but if if you do your post in Illinois with that one day of filming, then it will qualify. And Caesar, that's is that still considered needing to be principal photography? It can't just be a quick drive-by three-second B-roll shot? Right, exactly. Um, principal photography. Um, one other thing is that if, uh, and, and I'm getting a little bit in the weeds here, but if, um, if post-production counts for at least 50% of the qualifying spend, 
then essentially we need more uh, transparency and reporting uh, on those costs. Uh, whereas if you know if it's a standard you know production that say shoots it in in, in their entirety here, then uh, it, oftentimes it's like an arm's length transaction with like a post production company you know with them as a vendor. Uh, whereas if uh, post is more than fifty then we look for a lot more transfer transparency in the reporting. Great, thank you. Cesar, I've got another one for you, which is, can you speak to the diversity requirements in Illinois? Yeah, so uh, the Illinois Film Tax Credit Program has a diversity component uh, that, that was baked in, I think, uh, in the original legislation. So it's it's been part of the program since inception. And we have uh, we have seen uh, the the fruits of of those labors uh, over the years. Yeah. Uh, you know they've increased. Uh, they, it's stabilized. So, but right now it's it's about fifty uh, percent diversity, and that's uh, you know the, the the diversity of the Illinois crew to include uh, um, uh, females and uh, persons of color. Um, and that's that's uh, we we like to think that that's by virtue of the the diversity component uh, of the film tax credit program, and uh, so so what that means is that uh, every production that that applies and as part of the application process, um, the the production is going to certify that they're going to make good faith efforts to hire minorities and females as part of their uh, their production Illinois production crew. Uh, and uh, that they're going to track that. Um, and also that uh, they, they track the, the ownership and diversity of their vendors. So, um, and over the years we have, we have seen, uh, you know, those numbers grow from uh, the low teens. I think it was low of 13, I believe, uh, when, when the program first started. You, you, you were there before me, Betsy, but uh, right now, like I said, we're at about 50%. So we're very proud of those numbers. I think we were the only state at the, the, for a large number of years that, that, that had any sort of diversity uh, component to it. And so, you know, we're pr very proud of the, the fact that, that, uh, that productions have really, you know, taken this on uh, as well. Um, and, uh, you know, demonstrated, uh, and again, all we ask for is good faith efforts, that they, uh, we're, there, it's not a quota, we do ask them to establish a goal, but uh, that they make good faith efforts towards reaching that goal in higher minorities and females. And uh, the vast majority have, uh, you know, exceeded their goals. Yeah, it was, um, Caesar's right, that was baked into the very first Illinois tax credit program in 2003. And um, it was really with the help of um, the unions and everybody, um, frankly, I'd like to say all of, all of us in Illinois that really um, believe in the um, value of diversity in all of our um, work that we really worked hard to make that happen. So I'm glad to know those numbers are up so high, Caesar. I didn't even realize that, thank you. Um, are the projects and or production companies getting tax credits each year public domain? Not necessarily the amounts, but which companies got it and have experience with the process? Uh, since my microphone's on, I'll, I'll answer. In Illinois, yeah, uh, you know, again, because it is a publicly funded program, some of that information is, is uh, Subject to we call what we call FOIA or Freedom of Information Act. Um, on our on the department's website, the Illinois Department of Commerce's website, we we are required statutorily to report quarterly and annually on on figures like that, sort of general figures, uh, you know, diversity and spend and so on. So uh, there are a number of reports um, uh, on the Illinois Department of Commerce's website. Uh, that that uh, I think uh, might meet your your needs there uh, in terms of uh, how much is being uh, allocated for productions. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. I mean, we have we have numbers reported to our legislator and for the public use. We're public, you know, we're a public entity as well. So uh, we're actually required to send to the legislature either once every fiscal year or once every calendar year a list of any entity that received credit. Now on the film side, most of the companies come in, apply under a single member LLC, 
which you wouldn't be able to, tra- you know, you wouldn't, you'd have to be able to trace it to a Disney, but we've had all the, you know, we've had all the big companies participate in our program. Um, but yeah, we, we have all kind of reporting requirements as well that uh, I'm sure you can find the information or I, I think I can speak on behalf of Caesar or myself. If you're looking for something, just email us. Or if you're trying to get, you know, I often find that um, if I understand the back end of the question, the have experience with the process, sometimes it's best to engage with us because again, we, our goal is to make this process as simple as possible and understandable as pro as possible. That way you look over the website, you have questions, we'll engage with you. We'll explain it ad nauseum. We'll spend an hour, two hours, however long it takes. Um, and quite often you'll find that in a 30 minute conversation, you can get all your questions answered. Yeah, I think that just reiterates the point, everybody, that the film offices are here to help. They want your business and they want your process to be smooth. They want your experience in their state to be a really positive one so that you come back with your next project. And also, so, you know, this is a very word of mouth business, as you guys all know, um, so that you let your friends and colleagues know, and that's just better for the individual states, the more business they have. Um, I think Keisha has a question. I have another question. It was more of a prompt for you, Betsy, uh, but yeah, I am. I know that a lot of your work is also thinking about um, sustainability for independent filmmakers. And as we, when we were having the pre-call for this panel, we talked a lot about how this is a tool for that. And I think Chris and Caesar, I mean, just the fact that, you know, you've reiterated to us and get it again that this is a relational process that we you know filmmakers shouldn't be afraid to kind of come and speak with you I think is already breaking down those barriers and fears that go along with something that seems so complicated and I was wondering Betsy if maybe you could speak a little bit to just in your mind or in your experience how how you kind of frame this as a tool for sustainability and, or maybe when you've seen people not use it when they should, I'm not sure what the best way of kind of driving that point home is for people. Um, and then the final thing I was wondering is um, something you mentioned at the beginning, Chris and Caesar. we've got about 10 minutes left, so hopefully we'll get a few more questions in the chat, but uh, you mentioned that um, Illinois and Louisiana were kind of the most popular or some of the most popular states for tax credits. And I was wondering if that was just bias or if there is a reason why for that. So those are my two, my two questions. Yeah, those are great, Keisha. You know, Keisha's right. I do a lot of the work in consulting and the projects that I work on. I work with um, nonprofit film organizations. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the work is really surround, surrounds is sustainability. Um, Independent filmmakers um, who are often the creatives and, and the tradespeople who are lacking the backing of big studio dollars. And there, there's a real beauty in that, right? Because the idea is that you are, your project is not controlled by a huge corporate entity who is only thinking about, you know, first and foremost, how to get you know, the most, um, the most, you know, butts and seats and dollars in their pockets, um, you know, to enrich the corporation, but that you're, you're oftentimes really um, passionate about a story you are trying to tell. And, and storytelling and art, of course, is um, absolutely essential to all of our humanity and, and learning about each other in the world. So the thought that it is so hard to sustain a career in independent film is just a really frustrating conundrum for independent creatives. And one of the great things about film tax credits is they can help out with budgets. And when you can meet a budget, you can pay yourself as well as your colleagues a living wage. And as, as documentary makers know oh, and indie filmmakers know all too well that a lot of times the first thing that gets sacrificed when trying to um, 
you know, get out there and shoot and get something into the edit room is, is paying human beings and paying people. And a lot of times people will offer to volunteer time and such because there's so much passion around a project, but that's just not a sustainable way to make a living. So these, these tax incentives can really help add to your budget. And I know that so much of the information that we've been um, sharing sounds really complicated, but once you just focus on it, it's not complicated. It, it can really, really make a difference to getting, getting you and the other people working on your project paid and hence being able to have a sustainable career. And indie filmmakers should not have to be in the business of working for free. And it should not be the purview of people who have other resources to live on. You know, if, if you happen to be a person who has a second income in your family that makes a lot of money, okay, great. If you happen to be one of the lucky few who, who has money from other sources, great. But it should not be, um, independent filmmaking should not be um, specific only to those individuals. And the film tax credits that are offered around the country can go a long way in really, really making your budget um, able to pay people and that you know people are working hard and they should be paid for their work. So I urge everybody to always put a reasonable about amount of money into a film budget for yourselves, for producers and directors, as well as everybody working on your film and film tax credits can really help that happen. I'd also like to offer another um, way of starting out like a film tax credit 101. And that is there are a couple of websites that exist where you can literally plug in um, information about your project with criteria and it will tell you which states might be a hospitable location for getting their film tax credit. One of them is from the company Entertainment Partners, um, which is a, it's a big company that um, originally was um, dealing with payroll for films, but they have an incredibly user-friendly way to say, I'm spending this much money, this is my time frame, X, Y, Z, and it will compare states for you to show you what are the states you should look into in terms of bringing your documentary project. Um, did I answer that sort of in some of the information you were trying to get to, Keisha? Yeah, no, thank you. And also I'll just uh, let everyone know that we will be um, sharing these links to different um, websites in the cheat sheet that um, you can sign up to by clicking on the link in the YouTube live um, chat. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you. Thank you, Betsy. I think it's just important to just underline that as many times as possible. And I guess maybe, um, do we want to end with a, you know, why are you also popular question? <laughs> we also have time for one more question if anyone has one in the, in the audience, but for now, uh, we'll be able yeah. to with that one. I, I, I should just say a quick thing and I'm going to let Chris and Caesar speak to themselves. It's, it's really not a subjective question. When you look at the amount of projects coming into any given state, I think objectively, both Louisiana and Illinois are extremely successful. And I would say, because these two gentlemen are very humble, it also has a lot to do with the people who are leading these efforts in the office of being people that are easy to work with and people that really show you that they want your project. But you guys go ahead and cap that off. Thanks, Betsy. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think I've been doing this since 2004. And, and of course, there's a, a lot of pride in what we've accomplished here in Louisiana. And I think, like Betsy said, the amount of projects speak for themselves. Louisiana, Illinois, Georgia, California, New York, now New Mexico, Arizona has a program. My philosophy is that you know, we want to keep our filmmakers and our 
local people home here in the U.S. So it's more of a national pride than than anything else for me in keeping that work that is insanely mobile in the U.S. And I think programs like Louisiana and Illinois that have been around for so many years are stable, are easy to understand. There's no bait and switch. You come to our state, spend a dollar, we're going to give you 25, 30, 30 pennies back. I mean, I think building up the infrastructure and, and building up the crew base, having communities that are super film friendly and embrace these industries because it's part of our culture. It always has been. I mean, we've traced films as far back as the 1890s here in Louisiana. So it, it's, it's, and, and, and it's a, it's an aspect of our economy that I think we can diversify further from just our traditional industries of oil, gas, and tourism, and and things that Louisiana is traditionally known for. Um, but when I say we're the top states, again, that's that's track record, that's amount of projects, that's uh, you know, that, and that's a source of pride for us, and 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 um, you know, part of it's bragging a little bit on, on, on ourselves. Who wouldn't? I mean, I'm proud to work for the taxpayers of this state, but I'm also proud to be partners of, of, of Caesar, of Betsy, of, of the folks in Georgia to, to do everything that we can to better our, to better the opportunities that we present to our young people. And that's all I got to say about that. Uh, I, I couldn't have said it better, uh, Chris. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's all that. I mean, it's it's what whatever you know our respective states and you know obviously the cities have to offer. Uh, you know the infrastructure, the crew base, uh, you know locations. You know Illinois can you know uh, uh, has pretty much everything except mountains. You know, so and if you're looking for specific locations, you know we have that to offer. Um, it's a large city. Um, you know, third largest city in the country you know, airport, transportation, all that stuff that, you know, productions are looking for. And obviously incentives, you know, we've had, we've got some of the longest running incentives, um, you know, out there. And, and I think that that has really helped uh, build that in infrastructure that they may have already been there, but really, uh, you know, shore it up and, and uh, continue, you know, growing our programs and uh, film productions in our re re respective states. Yeah, and one last plug for both Illinois and, and Louisiana and, and plenty of the other states out there, but really um, is that when you have a state that has such a booming business like Illinois and Louisiana, you will also find really, really top of the line people to work with in terms of crew, in terms of post-production, especially people from Los Angeles sometimes don't realize that or people from New York just because they're used to everyone being at their fingertips. But I've had many a director from Los Angeles and New York to tell me best crew they ever found was here in Chicago. So, and I know the same is true in New Orleans and outside of New Orleans. So another, and because, and because those things count in your film tax credit, those are important things to know. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you, everyone, so much, Betsy, Caesar, Chris. This has been great. I'm sure that people will be watching it again and again since it will be recorded and streaming. And um, yeah, I hope that this has just helped us take one step forward in terms of opening up a more sustainable practice for, for people. Um, again, thank you all so much. And um, I think that's it for us today. Thank you, Keisha. Thank you, everyone at IDA for helping thank get you. out this important information. Thanks, Betsy. All right, everybody, take care. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>